Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game SO. Tarek and we're continuing the series on the Mr. FPJ DE10 Nano Project, and over the weekend we got a lot more details on Taki Udon's Mr. FPJ clone, both the $99 Jurassic DE10 Nano clone as well as some of the other consoles he has coming out, including some of the prices, when they might be shipping, and some of the limitations of some SKUs that are meant to be more budget conscious. We're going to be going over them all today. Before you get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined to support the channel, I got a Patreon link down below as well. But it looks like the DE10 clone board has passed the final quality assurance test, that means it can now go to manufacturing, because basically before you get the production line running, putting on components, you want to make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. So this looks like a near to final, if not final, look at the Jurassic DE10 clone board. And you're going to see it looks very, very familiar, because it is cloning the DE10 Nano, and this is the $99 item that's going to save you about $120 to $130 plus shipping if you pick it up from Terrasic. And this is the one that most people have been most curious about because one of the best things about Mr. FPJ is you can really design your own builds. You need that DE10. It is the brain of the entire project, but then you can kind of put on whatever board you would like to make the Mr. your own. So we went from this, which were some of the engineering samples we first saw when the project was announced, to a completed QA tested and approved board. So that means this is getting very close to being something that can be a shipping product. There's actually been some dates mentioned, which we'll go over a little bit later in the video, but an underside view of the board as well. And apparently people really wanted a green PCB, so Taki and his partners went with green. Honestly, it doesn't really matter what color it is to me, and it has been tested with some of the IO boards as well, so you should expect compatibility with this, but when it does come out, I'll definitely start plugging some things in and telling you how it seems to go. Now, on the shipping side of things, it looks like they got an earlier delivery window from the supplier of the FPGA chips not sure who that is but you do need to buy these in advance and in enough quantities to get that window so it seems like they're looking at late june early july to be able to ship at least the clone de10 board and again that's the one that most people are very curious about it's the one that taki udon has previewed on his channel this footage is his showing off everything running and testing additionally he started talking about one of the other consoles the one that reads cartridges and he did another mock-up render to show you what it's going to look like on the revision so we'll take a closer look at the back the overall I.O. and what that's going to mean and what these budget consoles actually are because there's more details that's going to be really important when you make your decision which one you might want to pick up. But if we take a look around the back at one of these cart reading consoles, you're going to see it's a very standard setup that's replicating most if not all of the ports from a Mr. FPGA triple stack. Differences are you're getting USB-C power in, you have two USB ports on the back, I'm assuming there's more around the front, HDMI as well as VGA for your analog signals, audio, Toslink, and Ethernet. So you basically have everything you would need here on the back of this to be able to get analog out, HDMI out, all the things you're used to when it comes to Mr. FPJ. And again, this basically just seems to be replicating an analog triple stack where you have the VGA port and you have the HDMI over on the DE10 side of things. So he talked about removing some of the ports and moving them around again just to kind of get the overall thickness down, which is nice. It's got some PlayStation Vita, PlayStation TV vibes going on for me. But apparently this is going to be running one core, at least on the budget side of things. Taki is going to be doing some one-off consoles that seem to just be one core focused. So it'll be interesting to see what that means. And over on Mr. FPJ on the Discord, he talked about the fact that it's not going to have 120 megabytes of RAM because the one core that it's intended on running isn't going to require that. So we can definitely, by process of elimination, remove some of the carts it could read based upon the overall RAM size. Because for the most part, if you're doing a new Mr. FPJ build, everyone recommends 128 megabytes of RAM so you can play absolutely everything. So that means at least on the cart reading side of things, I highly don't think it's going to be Neo Geo because the largest cart games are definitely going to be much larger than the 64 megabytes or less that could be in this system. For Neo Geo, you definitely need that 128 megabyte RAM. Now as far as the Nintendo 64 side of things, the largest games are going to fill 64 megabytes and it's definitely recommended to have a 128 megabytes on your Mr. FPJ if you want to play the entirety of the Nintendo 64 library. So it's probably a safe bet that this isn't going to be Nintendo 64 either, but that does leave Sega Genesis well within the realm of possibility because you do not need to have 128 megabytes of RAM to play absolutely everything the Genesis has. And of course, it does read cartridges, so that does put it in that possibility area. Sega Saturn needs 128 megabytes of RAM, and of course, it uses CDs, not cartridges. So this is a very easy thing to rule out. So it seems like the budget 
console genuinely is designed just to play one system and one core. We're just waiting to see what that is, but if I honestly had to venture a guess just based on popularity, I think it's probably going to be reading Super Nintendo and Super Famicom cartridges, or that would be my guess at least, but leave your guess down below. But we do know now, based on Taki on Twitter, this is going to be $115 with the RAM module, so it seems like we have a concrete pricing at least on the clone board as well as the budget cart reading console. And if you know already, if you didn't watch the previous video, the Terrasic DE10 Nano right now, if you order directly from Terrasic or any of their third-party vendors like DigiKey, is going to run you $225 plus shipping and any VAT that you may have to pay in your country. But obviously, that's not part of the price of the DE10 Nano. That's just how taxes work. And Taki's also talked about the current impression of what is coming. We have the flagship, the mainstream, and the budget. The budget is the one that seems to be reading the cartridges. The flagship and the mainstream are the ones that we want to see a little bit more detail on coming forward. Because we have seen some of these renders and mockups about the HDMI and analog in, and it's still very interesting to wonder what those would be there for. Obviously, HDMI out and VGA out or analog out are going to be very important for playing Mr. FPJ on your television, whether that's an LCD or whether it is a CRT. But the ins are a very curious thing, and no one's really 100% quite sure what these are going to be doing yet. My guess, and a lot of other people's guesses, is some sort of internal video scaler that you can actually use the Mr. as a scaler, but we're really not sure. And the brightness volume definitely seems very interesting as well. Being able to adjust the image brightness on the Mr. console, that is a very curious thing, and we're going to just have to wait and see what it does more. Like I said, my guess is a video scaler, but the details are very fuzzy, so it's going to be very interesting to hear exactly what this thing is supposed to do. And obviously, in the last video, we also talked about the handheld getting an AMOLED display, and this is just a mock-up. We talked about the buttons last time, but again, it's looking like the handheld is going to be $150 or less, so we're getting a lot of pricing here. $99 for the clone board, $115 for the cart reading console, around $150 for the handheld. The mainstream and the flagship, we don't know the prices on yet, but Taki stated over on Mr. Discord that you could buy all of these things for less than the cost of what Mars FPGA is proposing, around $700. And that is going to be a great thing for Mr. FPGA. A lot of different options at a much smaller price point for whatever you want to do. You're going to have the mainstream, you're going to have the budget, you're going to have the handheld, and you're going to have the flagship model, which we don't know a ton about. So you're going to be able to pick and choose what you want. If you just want to play one core with cartridges, that's going to be an option around $115. But if you want to just do your own Mr. Build and completely not buy into any of the console designs, then it seems like you're going to be able to pick up the clone DE10 board very soon for $99, and the RAM is going to be cheap as well. So I think that's what a lot of people are going to do off the top, is just build their own Mr. Triple Stack, because that is one of the fun ways to be able to play Mr. doing the traditional three on top of themselves. But that is the current situation with Taki Udon and his Mr. Clones. We're getting a lot more details, and it seems like these things might become available at least to order at the end of June or beginning of July. So things are definitely moving fast, and as soon as these things are available, I will pick one up, at least one if not all, test them for you on the channel, and tell you what I think. That way you can make more informed buying decisions. But if you have any questions or comments, I'll leave them down below. But those are the details on the clone, and I will see you guys next time when we have more information. Bye-bye.